Okay, so welcome everybody to this last presentation of the of the session. We will be talking about uh, the serverless infrastructure that we have uh, built for the Copernicus Emergency Management Program with the use of vector data and TIFF as PBF and COG. First of all, give you a little background on, on the project, on what we want to, to achieve. Uh, this works and all the outcomes has been, have been fina financed by the Copernicus program. So, uh, let's go, after this disclaimer, <laughs> let's go to the, <laughs> to, the, to the content of the presentation. Uh, well, the emergency management system of, of Copernicus has two, has two main ways to offer information. It works when there is a disaster, they put on a, quite a big process, they run satellites, they have uh, over the area and so on, and they use OpenStreetMap data. So they produce map to be used on the field. Those uh, are on-demand mapping for uh, what they call rapid maps, and they also have risk and recovery maps for uh, prevention and planning, and also for seeing how after a disaster a, a zone has evolved. All this information is generated by, by a group of, of people that uh, takes all the, all the data and uh, produce the, the maps. And uh, now it's evolving to a, to a let's say to a web, uh, to a web environment. But uh, there is a very, very strong and specific uh, requirement with this architecture. This architecture has no databases and has no uh, server backends, understanding them as a geo server or a map server, or of course there is an Apache or an Nginx and so on to, to publish the, the data, but there is no processing. Everything is uh, asking to the, to the server, retrieving the info, and everything is uh, on the client side for the representation uh, and so on. So we are using open source for, for all the process. And, uh, well, here is the, the reasoning behind uh, all, the, all the information that we have to display. First of all, for the vector data consumption, we have a really a very massive uh, amount of data to be shown, around 100 million features, and also the, the OSM data. So in the beginning, we, we thought on sharing this data with WMS, WMST, or WFS. But uh, finally, as there is this strong requirement, we, we went for the, for the stack approach. Okay, as you can see, the, the requirements are no database, again, no server backend, and the, the data has to be static. For the raster data, it's the same. They have the satellite, uh, the satellite imager, imagery, and well, we have also to find a way to serve this data. In so, so there was not a, a backend with logic and resource consumption behind. So finally, with the way to to consume them was through the cloud optimized COGS. Mm, there, are, uh, well, we will talk later on how we are approaching it, but we have a a little bit uh, trick with a proxy there, which is breaking a little the, the server backend uh, principle, but we are working in a direct client consumption from the, from the COG itself that is deployed. So we started to look for a, a serverless architecture. As we have said, for the stack, we have to, to organize uh, a data catalog with folders with a folder structure where we will store all the PBF uh, and cloud uh, optimized GeoTIFFs. For this, uh, once we, we have this, uh, this uh, folder structure in place, we have a script, we have developed a script for, to generate the, the catalog JSON to be compliant with, the, with this uh, stack structure. So you can know where the child, who is the we, who are the childs of the of the folder, the parent, uh, and so on. Then it came uh, another requirement as we are talking about Co Copernicus, European Commission, and so on. We needed to have all the information published in a in a catalog with CSV, and also with 
open API to to use the to use it uh, to to raise the to find the the data. So there we use registry, which is running behind Py CSW and indexing everything in, in Elasticsearch. And then for the for the cloud uh, optimized GeoTIFF, as we have said, we have a we have a, we are working in a fully client implementation to consume the the data di directly from the folder structure. But uh, for the moment, we are using the Radiant Earth proxy to consume the to consume the code directly on the on the client. This is a, an example of how we uh, have organized the stack architecture. It's, uh, well, it's uh, quite straightforward to, to see that we have organized the, the emergencies. Every time there is an emergency, there, there is what they, it's called an, an activation. And uh, this activation has uh, several folders with areas of interest and then delineations and then so on. And finally, you get to the, to the data itself. Uh, as we ha have said, what we have in first place is the, the folder structure. We put the, the folders there and then we distribute the data. And finally, once the folder is in place, we produce the, the catalog JSON. This uh, catalog JSON, you can see it here, has uh, the structure that, well, follows the stack specification where the links for the child, the parents, uh, and the root. So you can uh, go up and up and down the folder, the folder structure. Um, here, then for the final approach, let's get a little bit into the how we generate each of the each of the the components that we are the the data tiles that we are using in, in PBF. Originally, as a, as an input. Uh, from the people that start mapping and delineating the roads and, and the areas of interest and so on, we have uh, shape files. And then we converted it to, to PBF. But uh, when the, as we have said in, uh, at the very beginning, we have lots of features. And uh, with that kind of uh, amount of data, uh, DIDAL was not uh, working uh, properly. Well, not properly, but not uh, with the time that was needed to have the information in, in place. I mean, we are talking that uh, this rapid mapping uh, has to be up and ready in two hours. So we made some some research on how to how to translate from shape files to to the PBF, and for the amount of data we were needing, uh, it took more than those two hours, up to 11. So we had to find another way. Uh, which was uh, simple. Well, the solution was uh, to ask for GeoJSON files uh, as an input and use TPK Noe to generate the, the vector tiles. So here you have a, well, a sample on the, on the timing that we have uh, obtained for the generation of the PBFs. And then some, well, some options for the TPK Noe, for the TPK Noe script. For the OSM, we also use the, the OSM data in, in the maps. Uh, well, the, the approach is, is simple also. You have, the, you have to ask the area of interest to the, the OpenStreetMap API. So once you are, you are there, you obtain the, the .OSM uh, file with all the data inside. And uh, then you generate the, the vector tiles. In, in this case, uh, well, you are using again a, a Python script. So uh, we are converting this to, to the PBF. All this information uh, is, going to, is going to be spread into, different, uh, into dif the different folders that we have seen uh, here. You can see all the vector tiles, the, the OSM data, the how everything is placed in the, in the stack structure. So we have up to here is, let's say, an organization of the data, and inside here it's the data itself. From this level and below, we have there all the, all the PBF standing, and also the, the GeoTIFFs. So 
here. And uh, we have uh, left behind the, the catalog. For the, for the catalog, as we have been commenting before, uh, we, need, uh, we need this service to, to find to find all the all the data that we have in the in the stack catalog, so uh, we use the registry to publish all the CSW uh, services and also the open API, so we can make a filtering by name, by area of interest, and that kind of requests in the client, and you can add the the information to the to the web client to be to be seen. And finally, let's get into, into the COGS. For the COGS, uh, we have, uh, well, depending on the scale, we have different, uh, different resolutions. And uh, what we do here is a, a sampling of uh, eight bytes, bits, sorry, uh, with an improved compression algorithm that uh, we are using uh, here. Well, the conversion script, we are using a, a conversion script that uh, takes these, uh, these resolutions and uh, create several levels of tiling of the cogs. So what we have originally is a, is a big image and what we do is tiling it in the levels that we have also seen in this, in this uh, architecture and putting here inside them all the all the all the geotiffs. Then the thing is how to how to consume these these uh, costs. For these costs, uh, we found uh, well we found different uh, difficulties on, on how to integrate it in uh, in the client. So uh, we obtain it directly from the from the from the folder structure, but it's uh, not uh, recognized as an image itself when we make the, the request. So there is a Tyler, as we commented in the in the very beginning, that we are using as a kind of proxy, which uh, allows uh, the the browser to interpret the cog uh, piece that we are requesting as an image. So uh, we are using uh, at this moment we are using this this proxy to to ask for the information and then display it in the in the client. This is also open source. It comes from Radiant Earth. They have a Docker file, so you can, well, they have a public service if you want to use it, and if you want to deploy it in, in your own premises, you can, also, you can also do it by simply deploying the Docker server in, a, in, any, in any instance you have. Well, here we are using also Amazon, but you can do it in, in your own premises. And the second part here is uh, how to integrate this in the in the viewer without using this uh, let's say this proxy that allows us to to display the the cogs uh, as an image okay in this second approach uh, we are trying to to make this uh, tiling request of the geotiffs using the the geotiff js uh, library but we are we are here having uh, some issues with regard uh, the clipping of the of the tilings and also the integration in the in the client for the client we have not uh, we have not talked because we have another another session the, this afternoon but we are using macbook mapbox cl so uh, in a react environment so we are consuming directly the the pbfs from from there and drawing in the in the map Using a styling from Maputnik also, and for this, for this representation of the of the PBFs, uh, sorry, for of the cogs, we are we are dealing with the with the proxy and integrating the the GeoTIF JS, which is not available in for the moment in, in Mapbox, and uh, this is I think this is. 
this is it. We have gone maybe uh, quite uh, fast, but uh, if you want me to go back and you have any questions uh, that you want to clarify, and you can also see the, the client or whatever, please feel free to. Sorry, sorry, because you need this for the for the video. Yeah. Did you consider client-side tiling for the vector data? For the vector uh, data. Did you consider use to use client-side uh, tiling? There's this library from Mapbox that is VT GeoJSON, which you can use to then uh, pull in GeoJSON on the client and then the browser will do the tiling for you. Uh, well, it was a, requi a requirement using directly the PBF, finally. So we co could not use the, the GeoJSON as it is. Uh, we struggled a lot uh, with, the, with the web client uh, representation. We, we tried to do it with Kepler, with DeckGL, but they are very oriented to, to represent the GeoJSONs. So when we have a PBF tiled, uh, the well, one of the way that we found was to to take this tiled PBF directly from the from the Mapbox uh, using the Mapbox GL JS API and um, in PBF format. I don't know if it's okay. No. Okay. Okay. Hi, you've um, you've gone to some uh, extensive measures there to go serverless or as as much serverless as you can. Yes. Um, what was much. the main incentive for that? Was it cost or something else as well? Well, uh, maintaining the the data. Uh, this the, not only the cost, but also the 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 need to have uh, ready an infrastructure that where you just uh, drop the input from, from a different and very separated team who doesn't know anything about IT, who doesn't work with databases, with, with a classic post GIS and then uh, your server and then you write everything there and then you publish a layer and so on and then you put it in the, uh, in the viewer. You just drop uh, the agreement, it's operational mainly. You drop all the, all the data there, you press the run scripts and they are there. Uh, then it's about also performance. If the people from the from the emergency is massively using the 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 server part, uh, they will need also to put in place and scale up uh, infrastructure. You, for, again, the, your server you have to put several nodes and so on. They are they are moving a lot of a lot of data and uh, it's they are really heavy. So uh, with this, uh, as much serverless as we can, you are picking it up directly. So the, uh, there is no heavy process there. So it's operational mainly. Any other questions? OK, so if you want to continue, this was uh, the first part, let's say. If you want to know a little bit more about the, the client and how we have organized this, we have a, another talk at, at 5 o'clock. So, well, with you there. Thank you. <laughs>